Hi guys, my name is Sean Middleton and I'm here to talk about ghosts, ghouls, monsters, mysteries, cults and conspiracies. And today we're just going to do a little story time of the time that I used to work in a very haunted nursing home. So I was probably around the age of about 17, 18 maybe. Um, and the majority of the residents there, they had um, dementia, Alzheimer's, um, and lots of other things that meant a lot of them were either in wheelchairs or had very limited mobility. I obviously won't be mentioning any names because um, I don't want to get in any trouble, but uh, there was this one lady who had like these massive um, like teddies, like she had like a big lion one, a big tiger one, and I think like a big cheetah one. They were massive, they were huge. Um, and we knew that she was gonna pass over um, she hadn't hadn't been well for ages, and um, pretty much she was dying. So she said to me, she said, "Can you please put the teddies by the door?" And I said, "Well, why do I? Why do you want me to put the teddies by the door?" She said, "Put the cat teddies by the door because there's a cat man at the door trying to get in." And I said, "What do you mean?" And she said, "There's a man standing at the door and he's got a cat face and he's trying to get me. He's waiting for me." And I was like, oh my God. So obviously I just put the cat teddies by the door um, to make her feel more comfortable, but yeah. Okay, so one of the first things that happened is, so the house was two houses and it was built into one. Um, so there was like a new part of the house and then the second part of the house was a much older part. Um, and the older part was like a lot creakier, darker, and it had just more of like an eerie vibe to it. Um, I can remember whenever we used to take residents down that end, um, a lot of people would be like, oh, can you come with me? I don't really want to go by myself. Um, but one time I put a resident to bed um, and they had a lift, because obviously a lot of them had, were in wheelchairs, so I took her up in the lift, got her onto her bed, um, sorted her out, got her in her pyjamas and did everything else I needed to do for her. Um, and there was kind of a bit of a ghost story about that side of the house because um, a lot of residents and a lot of staff members that have worked there have said that they used to see a naked man running from one end of the hallway to the other and like running in between rooms. Um, and now like I said, so none of the residents could run. Um, they were all like in wheelchairs, they had walkers, walking sticks, like there's no way that any of them are running. Um, but there was lots of sightings of a man running around. Um, I say naked, he wasn't, they didn't say he was naked. He had like um, what we call a pad, like a pad on, um, a bit like an adult diaper really. Um, so he had one of those on and he would run in between the rooms. Um, and apparently this was a spirit of a resident that used to be there previously. Um, so I was putting this resident into bed, sorting them out, and like I said, I put their pyjamas on and everything, and then I was literally just about to leave, and then all of a sudden I heard, boom, 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 boom. And it was as if somebody was running from one side of the corridor to the other. It's like, boom, 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 boom. Like, you know, like the heavy footsteps of someone running. And we just kind of looked at each other, and I was like, okay, good night. <laughs> and I just left. Because it was so scary, but she, I could tell she was scared as well, but, um, yeah, there's no way, and there was nobody else out there with me, I was the only carer up on that side of the floor at that time, and nobody else, no other residents would have been running, um, yeah, which was really scary. And then another resident we had, um, which actually, funny enough, was on that same side of that, um, same side of the house. Um, I think she would be, I think it was room number 42 that she was in and the residents had um, what we call call bells. So if they need like, if they need any help, any assistance or need anything really, um, they can just press the call bell. The number would flash up downstairs like to say like what number room it was and then we would go and check on them. Um, and she was known for always pressing her call bell. Um, so she'd press it, it would come up number 42, I'd go up there and I'd be like, oh yeah, you're right, like, do you need anything, like, what's wrong? And 
most of the time she'd be like, I didn't press my call bell. And I'm like, well, you did because your number's coming up downstairs. Um, but bless her, I think she's just a bit lonely and she just wanted some company, uh, which is fine. Obviously, you're in, you're in your room by yourself. You want some company. Um, but yeah, she, she would press it all the time. And nine times out of ten, for no reason, she would just press her call bell. Um, and then one time she was, I think it was around dinner time, um, and she, I think she previously had had a heart attack, um, and she was saying that she had pains in her chest and she wasn't feeling very well, so she ended up going to hospital, um, to the local hospital, and I actually ended up going with her, and I followed in my car with the ambulance and stayed at the hospital with her um, until like a family member could come and be with them. And very sadly, she ended up passing away a few days later in hospital, um, which obviously it's horrible. You don't want to see anybody that you care for die. It's horrible. Um, but a few days later, so we were serving lunch and just like literally just serving lunch, sorting things out, blah, blah, blah. blah. And then I hear the call bell alarm go off and it's number 42. And I'm like, but there's nobody in that room. The room's empty. Obviously, the person had died in hospital. There's nobody else in the room as of yet. They hadn't got a new resident in or anything like that. So I was like, oh, okay, I'll just go up there and check. Like, let me just make sure that nobody else is in there. Um, so I went up there. I don't know what you call them. Like the, like a table that can like slide under the bed, but then the top part of the table. So they can like sit in bed and put things on their table. That was under the bed. And the call, t the call bell was on the table, so nobody had touched it, but it was going off. So I reset it, fine. And then later on in the evening, again, number 42 went off. Um, and it kept going off, we kept going up there, there's nobody in there, nobody's pressed it. And just kept going off and off. Um, so we actually ended up having to take the batteries out. But it's just really creepy, because she always used to press the call bell, and then obviously, once she was passed, the call bell kept going off and we was like, oh, like none of us wanted to go to that old part of that building because it was, it was so like creepy. It was typical, like you walk up the stairs and they creak and it's just dark. You know, like when you go to an area like of a house or something and it's just so dark and you get this like really horrible vibe. Um, it was like that. Um, and then another lady, so I was caring for her. Um, and we're just, I think I was getting her ready in the morning and we were just having like a general chat. And then she was like, I can see the fairies. And I was like, excuse me? She was like, I can see the fairies. They're coming down from the ceiling. She's like, they come and visit me all the time. And I said, what do you mean? What do they look like? And she's like, they're floating down from the ceiling, all of the little black fairies. I can see them. And I was like, well, first of all, you're actually medically blind, so you can't see anything. <laughs> I didn't actually say that, that's horrible, but she was blind, she couldn't She couldn't see anything. Um, but she was like, they come and visit me. They come and visit me at night. And I was just like, oh, I'm out. But what I think is creepy as well is that, and a lot of people say this, I was actually talking to my friend the other day about this, and a lot of times, if somebody dies, it's always like in sets of three. So like three people will die, like in a really close time frame. Like it'd just be like three in a row, always. It's, it's so strange, I don't, I don't understand that, but yeah, it's weird. But I mean, if you think about it, like the amount of people that have died in a nursing home, that have lived in a nursing home, all of those memories, all of that emotion, all of that, with everything that's going on with so many people, like I think there was like about 40 residents in there. So I mean, there's bound to be some spirits in there, there's bound to be some energy in there, there's bound to be stuff that happens. Um, I mean, luckily I never did a night shift. Um, I was always too scared to do a night shift there, but um, there was always like stories of like tables moving, chairs moving. Obviously we had the call bells that kept going off. Ugh. It's just freaky, kind of gives you the chills, but it's weird because when you're like caring for someone or looking after someone, you kind of just have to put that to the side and just get on, do your job, and then 
we'll just talk about it after, share ghost stories. And it's like now I work in, well, I work in a hospital now, but I used to work in a different hospital. Um, and there's always like scary stories, little ghost stories of things that happen in hospitals. Um, so yeah, I'd love to hear what you guys think. What Have you ever worked in a haunted nursing home or a haunted hospital? Let me know your stories and we can have a little chat down below in the comments. Okay guys, stay safe and I shall see you later. Bye.